designed this car originally for Bill Mitchell in the studio, the Corvette program had already been canceled by General Motors. If Bill Mitchell had not come along, we wouldn't have Corvettes today. And the fact that he was brave enough to decide that we were going to continue with the Corvette program after it had been canceled, we wouldn't have it today. So the background on this was that when Chevrolet management killed the Corvette program, the reason that they killed it is that the C1s were not making any money. And what says what management looks at when they're going to design a new car? Is this thing going to make money? And the whole Corvette program, as exciting as it's been, with all the true believers in the, in the place that wanted to work on it, without it making any money, the program wasn't going to continue. This was an area of transition for General Motors. Harley Earl was retiring and Bill Mitchell was going to take over and he wanted to make his mark with a new design era and he could not take the program upstairs to the General Motors Chevrolet studio because General Motors management had already killed the Corvette program. So he had gone over in June of 1957, had gone over to the Turin show and he saw a whole bunch of little streamliners that were built over there. The interesting thing about all of these cars that were from down in Italy was all of them had a full cool belt line around the side and a little aerodynamic shape over the top. And they were made by everybody. Stangolini was making them, Asta was making them, Alfa Romeo was making them, and all of the little shops were making them. Everybody was competing in this. So for two years, this whole theme had been going on. And when Mitchell saw this, Italian market, he realized that this was a theme that might work out. So he took a bunch of photographs and he came back and because he could not take the idea of building a new Corvette up to the studio upstairs in Chevrolet, and because management would have found out about it, he decided to do it in secret. So he brought the project downstairs where I was working at that time basically as an intern designer. There were three of us in advanced design studio and presented these photographs to us and started talking about doing the new Corvette. And we were looking at each other going, what the heck? The vice president of General Motors is talking to us about designing the new Corvette. But that's what it really turned out to be. So he gave us the project, not knowing whether it was going to go or not. And we put our sketches up on the walls and ended up at, uh, he picked out the work that I liked. I became the lead designer on this car. So as I said, as of this month, and you can look at my book and I will show it to you, this car was designed 67 years ago with the first lines on it. And we made that car, and when it was finally produced, this is 1957, it took about five years before it finally went into production in 1963. So there was a lot of time that went on in General Motors to keep it and the design stayed the same from the original sketch. So that's why I'm so proud of the car because it's retained that look to it. So the opportunity, working with Mike Stavisky over here and Russ Oman, who actually his crew built this car, to do this car and redo it. But the important thing is, when you look at it, as if you were a fan of, Steve, of these split window cars, you'll notice all the details on it. There has not been a line on the on the body changed on it. There are a lot of people that have made wrestle mods out here, and they make wider fenders on it, and they change everything around. This car sticks to the original design. What I have changed on it is all the detailing in it. So you'll see things on the car in this thing that you've never seen before, but it's still the original car. So take it off and take a look. You liking it? What do you think here? All right. Now it's so interesting if you start looking around at the details on this car. For example, 
All this front end has been completely smoothed off. The shape is there, but we put the lights all underneath. If you look on a Corvette, the standard one, lights. all the vents on the side yeah. are fake. This car, everything is functional. All the vents on the side are real. Guys. All the vents up the top up here are real. Guys. And one of the most important things about the car that I really want to do is really keeping the form as much as close as possible from my original design. If you have a chance to walk around to the back end, you will see that it has increased the glass area on the back end considerably. So the design is still the original form, but it will increase the transparency on the car so it's all much, much lighter. And it has a whole different look on it. Point out the fin. You know, one of the important things that uh, Bill yeah, Mitchell did when he originally designed the car, I didn't have a fin in the middle. I had gotten the design all finished up, and Bill came in and he said to the clay modelers, he says, run a line right down the back with your knife on this rear window. And we're all looking at each other, and he put it down and says, okay, we're going to make a split window because he liked the Bugatti 57 SCs. Atlantic, and we wanted to make an homage to that car. So that's what we did. We made the split window. So the split window is the thing that, that Bill Mitchell put into this car. And it was a major, major problem because when Zoro Duntoff came over from engineering and looked at it, he was very, very upset because he said, that's going to get in people's vision in the way. But, but Bill Mitchell wanted the particular lines on this car. So one of the problems in doing the car in production was that the split window was so wide in the back that you couldn't really see it. So in redoing this car, one of the things I wanted to do is refine that bit of design in it and increase the glass area on it and put the fin in there just the way that Bill Mitchell wanted to do it. And we removed all the chrome on the back windows and everything, so we're really, really working on the form as much as possible on it. So, one of the great things about this car is that this was built, what I would call as a studio concept car in designing it. So in, in the studio, we would occasionally build one-off versions for General Motors executives or whatever on it. And that was sort of what I was thinking about in doing this car, is if we had the president of General Motors wanted a personal car, this would be it. The thing is, this particular car from the underneath has an Art Wars and chassis underneath with all new, new C7 suspension on it, an LS motor in it, all the latest running gear and everything underneath. So you'd have all the latest engineering underneath the car with the original classic looks that have been with us for 67 years.